Hello YouTube, CPI is coming in tomorrow. So we're gonna get a big move up or a big move down. What we wanna ask ourselves is what is the big man gonna be thinking tomorrow? Because as important as unemployment and jobless numbers are, CPI is the number that has moved the market more than any in the past. And this is gonna be critical right now because as we're looking here, we're looking at the E-mini futures or ES1. And I wanna note two things. First of all, we have a primary downtrend, which just shows us that we have been unable to stop going down for over a year, going back to January 4th when we formed our all-time high. So just over a year now, we've been going down. We reject, we reject, we reject, we reject. We get briefly above, but don't really close above it. And then we reject. So the question is now, are, have we finally built up, built up enough steam to finally break the trend and maybe even start going higher? Also, we have our 200-day moving average right here, uh, about four points higher than we are right now, or 0.1%. If we're already this high, what's an extra 0.1%? CPI is going to likely give us an oversized move tomorrow. That's what I think is going to happen. So at a very high level, that's what we're going to review today. We're going to talk about a few things, but as we're getting started, if you could please and thank you, smash that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to bring my lines back. Uh, the video is like not really that complicated today, but what I think is that there are a lot of mo emotions or feels, meaning people want things to happen. And if it's not obvious by now, uh, downtrend is consensus. Everyone's talking about the bear market being rejected, 2023 being a hard year, yada, yada, yada. So when everyone's looking one way, well, what can happen? We can move the other way. Mike Wilson, who has been the advocate for the bear market to go back to 3,000, it said that 3,900 was an easy sell. Well, that's 100 points lower. What are we doing now? We've invalidated the, the head and shoulders. We're over the 50 DMA for two daily closes, right? We know we, we hide everything. We're above the blue line for two days now. Oh, okay. Two days above. Potential trend change. We're invalidating the head and shoulders. We're battling for the long-term price or the 200 DMA. We're battling for our downtrend. Whoa, this seems like a real fight. And if we defer to, defer to the volume, what's been happening? Oh, that's right. Going back to October 10th and December 16th, we've been largely buying at about 38.55. How do I know? I did my homework. So now they're green by 150 points. Are they going to sell at 4,000? Are they going to sell higher or lower? It's like really important for us to track that. Also, if you look over here to um, a different chart, which is going to be NQ, uh, QQQ is also above this area. It's claiming the 50 daily. So it's climbing back above the 50 day moving average. Whoa. That's what SPY did a few days ago. So now let's look at a few scenarios here to see if we really understand what's happening. Not what we want to see, but do we understand? So let's look at SPY. Let's actually go here to uh, this chart. And we note that we still don't have a confirmed breakout. We still have to get here to about 405 on SPY to reclaim the 50, DM, 50 weekly moving average. We're really looking at a one-week chart. And that would really confirm things for me. On the ES chart, it's not a perfect downtrend. On S&P here, we're going wick to wick to wick to wick which would tell me that if we break these wicks, that's the trend change. That's the surprise where people aren't really ready for it. And as I look a little bit closer with a critical eye, we have a potential cup with a potential handle, and then we could advance. That's the bull scenario. The bear scenario was that nothing's really changed. As we talked about yesterday, we talked about before, but everyone's looking one way. So now let's do this. Let's look at a one day chart and let's get it nice and close. And I want you to pay attention to the last two candles here. So look at yesterday. Uh, meaning we get just above the 50, we close above it by about 50 cents, whatever, close enough. And then what happens today? We gap up and we leave a gap here. It's not a huge one, uh, but there is a gap. We're looking here to um, yesterday's high at, at 390.65 and today's low at 391.38 or roughly a one point gap. It's not huge, but it's there. QQQ also has one, but it's smaller. So now let's look at QQQ. Okay. This just like this looks like yesterday on S&P. Yep. Get right up to the 50, close just above it. And what do we have now? We have one daily candle close over the 50. And if we get another one tomorrow, that would be two. So if we gap and go at 280 here, is this area significant? I can tell you it is. I've done my homework. Let's have a look here. So if we gap and go or if we gap down and push, scenario one is that we're bullish, which means we're going to go higher. And if we look to our weekly chart now, Oh my goodness, I didn't know that area was there. What is it? It's 280.74. It is our 200 weekly moving average, which I've been talking about is like, why are we still below here if this is bullish? One, two, three, four. We're currently set for five weekly closes below the long-term price. 
Yes, that's not bullish, but we're already back above the 50 monthly at 273.3. We're now poking over the 50 DMA. Then we got the 200 weekly moving average, and then we got the 200 DMA at about 300. And then it's time to go back up if that's the short term trend. So it's really simple for me tomorrow. If we see QQQ go higher with a gap and it doesn't get filled or it does get filled, if we close green, that's two daily candle closes over the 50. That's my bullish scenario. Um, in terms of the bear scenario, we get a reject off of the 50 DMA and we start coming down. How low? Maybe one plus percent in reverse in today's, today's entire move, um, fill the gap truly, and maybe even go lower to 270, which would mean we would be below our 50 monthly. And looking to S&P, that would mean a full puke of today to go back down and test our 50 and to test the uptrend. We could go lower. We could go higher. Um, that's what I think is most probable, though. So if you're watching for tomorrow, if we're, if we're gapping up, let's watch the quality of the gap. Is it like today, form a lower wick and then close higher? What happens? If we start moving lower, though, watch for support. Where? I would say on the gap fill at 390.65. Then we're watching for the 50 DMA at about 390.1. And then we're looking for a loss of 389.75, which is going back here to our June gap. We just cleared the upper gap right now with 39578. Our high of the day, 395.6. Everything's working out. If we, if, we, if we trust our system and we have our levels, it's not really complicated. I just told you the bull scenario, which means ES is going to drag us higher over 4,000 in the 200 DMA. S&P will follow, um, just like NQ will test its level first. If we're going to move lower, if S&P is below its 50 DMA, notably on an hourly close tomorrow, that tells me that QQQ already failed. We got a reject off the 50. We're filling the gap. We're back below. We didn't make it to the 50, to the 200 weekly. We're back below the 50 monthly. That's bearish. So what I don't know for tomorrow is just whether or not there's been enough um, Enough, uh, uh, whether whether uh, we're buying the hype on CPI and then selling the news. And the reason why is because bears like me, um, I've been kind of pushed to the sideline because, well, fundamentally I have a thesis, technically it's just not really fulfilling. So I'm for, this is a forecast. The question is whether or not the big bears are going to pile back in tomorrow to drive us back down. Let's look at a little bit more, more evidence now. So trying to wrap the video up, but Jerome, uh, and actually uh, I'll, I'll circle back up to the articles here. I got a bit of a story. So here we got Jerome, right? He's going to be thinking hard tomorrow. And whether he's aware of it or not, based on what he said at the uh, symposium yesterday, he probably didn't want this, but this is what happened. U.S. financial conditions ease. Bloomberg index turns positive for the first time since April, which means financial conditions are now easy, right? Easy money's back. I don't know if that's what Jerome wanted. And he's always said, we need financial conditions to tighten. So... What happens? Well, I don't know. Market's fighting us, fight, fighting it right now. Jerome didn't really clarify. Maybe he fum fumbled a little bit. Maybe he blinked. Um, tomorrow, we got CPI coming in at 6.5 forecast. It comes in below seven. I think that's going to be received well. It comes in lower. Man, really well. It comes in red. Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be a, a bearish reaction. I'm just not sure it's going to be an overshot. That's why I'm watching that 50 daily or basically reversing today's gains. So that's it for the rest of the week. Then we're focusing on earnings. Then Jerome on the first. I'm going to defer to listen to two guys who are smarter than me now. Jeffrey Gunlock, uh, who's new, the new Bond King. Um, Gunlock says, listen to bond market rather than what the Fed, uh, rather than the Fed on rates. So what is the bond market telling us? Let's have a look. We look here to our two-year note, and we have a look here at our 10-year note. Oh, my goodness. Breaking the uptrend. Oh, it's starting to go down. I'd say it's going sideways. It's not ready to go down yet. Um, we got to form a, 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 a convincing downtrend, something like this, for us to really start going lower. I'm paying attention, though. I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention here. And then on the tenure note, well, not much lower to go back below 3.5. Um, it doesn't take much more for us to go back down here. And that could ultimately become some kind of head and shoulders. So I know the bear scenario. I'm, I'm very in tune with it. I've been on that, on that train for, two, for a year now. But I don't think a lot of people are looking this way. And Jeff Gunlock's pretty smart. The bond market's voting. Jerome kind of didn't really walk things back yesterday. Is that good enough? Well, let's uh, look at one more person here who I think is smarter than me. Peter Brandt. Strong opinions weekly held. Yes. So sometimes I have, an, I have a thesis and then I switch. Sometimes I feel really strong one way, like he says here. At the time of the post, I felt really strongly about the market prediction. And then he did it. That's called uh, understanding that the market moves. You got to be like water, as, uh, as Bruce, Bruce Lee says. You got to have to be ready, willing, and able to adjust with the market. So as we look here too, it pretty much comes back to, well, three out of four times after this pattern or a 12-month bear engulfing pattern, we usually have to hit the three-month candle look back. This time we didn't. 
Um, three candle top, sorry. Three out of four times or 75% of the time we go green. And we're green. We're green over 3% on the year. History does, does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And so far it is rhyming. So as of right now, in hindsight, we have a bullish scenario. Do we believe it? Well, that's up to you. All right, looking here to uh, our options. This is another reason to be motivated. I have more I want to tell you, but we're going to leave it here in about 10 minutes. Uh, as I look here to year to date, we already know they've been buying puts like you wouldn't believe. But year to date, uh, week to week to date, they've been buying puts still. 1.4 put call ratio. They're betting heavy, and they're betting mostly for January 20th. So this could be that the wheels are now in motion, and big earnings really kick off after the 20th. Netflix on the 19th, everyone else after, like Amazon, Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, all them after, which means that it doesn't really matter. If they want to burn premium, we have to go higher. And the bears are really positioned. When we're told 390 is an easy sell and we melt to 400, man, people are going to be frustrated. Yes, they're going to be frustrated. All right, so now we're going to talk here a little bit about our sponsor, visualsectors.com, which you can go to the link in the description to find out more about them. And this is a tool that is free to start with where you can learn about market flow, money flow, like options. They have a 70% win rate on S&P. We can note here that they have a sentiment for individual ETFs like S&P, Russell, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, VIX, bonds. You can see it's mostly a bullish sentiment. If we now have a look here at SPY or the individual card, they also give us things like volume levels and targets, key levels, growth bets, and more. So if, if you want to find out more about visual sectors, please go to the, to the link in the description. If not, I wish you all the best of luck tomorrow, and I look, to, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you so much.